Hey guys, B Wildcat2 here. I have a, a very good friend of mine here with me today. What's up, everybody? It's Not as Fan here. And we are here to talk about a uh, very momentous celebration here today. That's right. We had MLB history going down in New York. The Mets get their very first no hitter thrown by Johan Santana, the first in 51 years as a franchise. Yep, and uh, after tonight, or well, after this game, there is only one franchise that has not had a no-hitter in their history now. That would be the San Diego Padres we speak of, and sorry Padres Chargers forever, one of my faithful watchers. You're going to have to agonize about that a little bit longer. Well, but like like you say, I mean, a no-hitter is, is a very wonderful thing, and it's always, uh, it's always cher cherished, so... Especially if it is your team's first in their franchise history. Well, especially waiting so long, 8,020 games to be exact. That's a lot of baseball being played without a no-hitter. And to think of some teams that have, you know, 9, 10 of these, it's uh, kind of funny how that actually works itself out, that some teams had not had one yet. And the Mets are crossed off that list now. I mean, Santana gets it done. Yeah, and, and Nolan Ryan, he was a Met for one time, but he had seven career no-hitters. You don't think he could have just thrown one with the Mets or something? I mean, Yeah, it's like, throw us a bone. Come on. Anyway, well, um, got to give the Mets some love in here. Uh, they definitely deserved it tonight. I mean, uh, eight runs on eight hits. They beat up Adam Wainwright, but the real, the real hero of the night was Santana, no doubt. So... Yeah, definitely enough run support, and uh, it, it kind of came late. I mean, the game was definitely not out of hand. I mean, they scored two in the fourth, three in the sixth, and three in the seventh. As a matter of fact, by the time they were scoring runs in the seventh, it was almost like, you know, just hurry up and get off the field so Santana can do his thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, are you trying to jinx the man? I mean, he's throwing a no-hitter now. Are you uh, intentionally doing this? or? Yeah, it's almost like the coach uh, calling the timeout to ice his own kicker. It's like, what are you doing? So... But at least they wanted to make sure they had the run support, and they did just that. Yeah, they had enough run support. The question was, would their uh, would the defense be able to keep making the plays? And definitely they got some help from the umpires. Uh, it, I believe it was the top of the sixth inning. There was a questionable call down the left field line. Uh, it was like right in front of the third base umpire. He called a ball that looked like it hit some chalk or something. He called it foul. What do you think about that? Yeah, when you know you when you have the luxury of the super slow mo and um, you know tight replays, you, you're gonna see that ball hit the chalk. But I mean, one thing I love about baseball, you know, love it or hate it, it is a game decided by human instinct for the most part. Yeah, we've got replay on certain occasions for home runs and things like that, but uh, it's just part of the game. You know, it goes back to the botched perfect game in Detroit <laughs> yeah, with the uh, call that obviously should have been made the other way that would have uh, gotten a perfect game but you know that's just yeah. part of the human element of baseball and I say that uh, whatever that's part of the game and, yeah. and, and that'll happen so I, I don't think it detracts from, from what happened I think Santana earned this and yeah that technically was should have been a hit but you know play on in my opinion exactly and uh and another thing, um, going back to what we said about defense, there was a, a nice play in the seventh inning that um, poor Baxter, he's probably going to have uh, bad shoulders for the rest of his life. Well, it looked brutal. <laughs> it really did in the replays. I mean, he went full force into that wall, but uh, that's the kind of it's determination over one that you'll thus far. get from players. If you're going to start it's throwing softly a, to a the gem right like side. that, they're going to start they say there's and always a gem in every no hitter in the game. I, I think back to Mark Burley with Dwayne Wise making that nice catch. Oh, yes. I mean, it, it, it brings back so many memories of so many great plays to keep the keep the dream alive almost. So you love to see great defense in games like these. That's right. You'll see players go all out and uh, and at least give the effort if they can't uh, if they can't haul it in. But so, yep, they uh, they definitely made the plays when they needed to and got a little help from the umpire. But but this night really belonged to Johan and his effort. I mean, 134 pitches, the most he's ever thrown in a game, and he really just finished it the way that would be signature for him with that wonderful changeup of his. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at his stats, uh, obviously the no hits, no runs, uh, eight strikeouts, but the the really weird thing to see is five walks, and that that, that those five walks really paid into his uh, pitch count, which was 134 pitches. I know the crowd had an anxious moment when the manager came out in the eighth inning. There were some boos in the crowd. <laughs> they were worried they were going to take him out, but... Santana was not leaving that pitch in Riverway. So there you have it, our quick thoughts on a very monumental happening here in New York sports and in MLB in the big picture. So uh, thanks for joining us for this. Uh, we definitely had a lot of fun watching him make history and talking about it as well. Exactly. And uh, may, may uh, the Mets, now that they've got one under the, their belt, maybe they'll have a uh, a lot more. I know that they've come close before, and uh, maybe this one will help uh, spawn some more um, being thrown. Of course, I think what they would really want to focus on is getting themselves into the playoffs this year. They would, uh, they'd take that over another no hitter, I would imagine. So uh, there you go. That's our wrap up of Johan Santana's no hitter, the first in Mets history. Thanks for joining me, and not as fan, and my friend B Wildcat too. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Definitely give us both a, a like, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to Nada's fan, then subscribe to him. If you haven't subscribed to me, then come subscribe to me, because I've got some good content, and uh, I do the best with what I can. And we're both uh, lovers of baseball and Major League action, so check us out all summer long. We'll see you guys. Later.